button. So yeah, I think we're we're recording now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's good. I think we're set. So um, I tried to put together a little uh, slideshow so that I could share my screen with you and then talk through the whole, you know, where where it started and where we are going and <laughs> the whole thing. So let me try to do that and see if I can get my photos up and then, okay, I have to share that. Okay, do you see it? Yes. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, that's my, the statements there. So uh, I'm just gonna read it out loud so that whoever is, needs to hear it can hear it. Um, and uh, Abigail, listen closely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, Holly, you wanna read it, you could too, it doesn't matter. I'll let you read it. <laughs> okay. My inspiration is a lovely man, Roger, who has been battling brain cancer for a great part of his life. After hearing about his ongoing journey, I was concerned about how a designer, dressmaker, sculptor who focused on the female form would relay Roger's strength and hope. Through my conversation with him, I learned that what carries him through the profound challenges in his life is his wife, Holly. My focus then became clear. That doesn't mean Abigail doesn't really <laughs> help out a whole lot too, I'm sure. <laughs> it's a giant source of strength and support to have a beautiful little girl on your side. Um, the, the next paragraph, the brain is the basis of all we do and all we are able to do. So I started with that imagery as the foundation for my piece. From the cerebrum and cerebellum grew the angel. With outspread wings of hope, dark and reflective, she protects and embraces. Her cape wings are covered with the patterns of neurons, the axons and dendrites, colliding and intersecting, each point marked by the light of Swarovski crystal. Although the sculpture is a hollow form without indication of body parts, I strive to fill it with emotion so that the viewer could imagine the soul that lives within. So, try, there she is. So, um, I don't know, I guess it would be good to just spend a minute in the beginning looking at it. I have lots of views and then to think about if I captured it or not, but you can see the surface there um, is the supposed to represent the brain. Can you make the window full size so it's bigger like I am? I can't hear. Can you, can you make the window full size? So oh yeah, I'm gonna try that. Uh, let's do that. What are you trying to do? Make it uh, uh, enter full screen. Okay, got it. There you go. Okay. So that's what she looks like. What is it made of? It's it's ceramic. It's clay, but it looks like metal huh. because of the glaze that I used, and um, and then the imprint you know, of the brain, the bottom part is supposed to look like the brain and then the top cape is, is kind of the connectors. Mm -hmm. That's the back view. And then the bottom, which is the indication of, of the brain. And um, the way that I started this whole thing after my first conversation um, was to try to think about really what is important in terms of the imagery. And um, that's my studio where I kind of put the whole thing together. And 
I began by researching brain imagery from the start, and I went through a number of, of um, points where I kind of narrowed things down into the images that I was most comfortable starting with. <laughs> and I just love this one because clearly it represents everything we're talking about, and it's probably a complete answer to this whole project without my sculpture but <laughs> I love it, so I kept it. And, um, and then the synapses, and, and which I think are almost a literal translation into the piece itself. And so this is, um, this is the clay that I began with. It's rolled out flat, and then I used a pattern and an, um, a, a, press, a pressure sensitive uh, tool that allowed me to put all these lines in. And, um, and that became the cape and the little spot in the center there, that, that's where the neck of the body fits through. Um, and then there is the basic form in, in clay before I added the wings. And in, initially this piece, and I, I don't even know if I should share it, but <laughs> it, it, was a, it was about 27 inches high. And the weight of the cape was so much for it to bear that it kept falling. And no matter what sort of support, you can see the wooden support there and the clay bumps that I, I put into the sides that um, even that didn't really support it. And I have it there supported, but as it started drying, it started cracking. So I wound up with that. Yeah. And that. <laughs> and, you know, it, it was a lesson. It was humbling. It, and it happens all the time. So I don't even get upset anymore, really. I just start over. And I think that that is testament in itself to what we go through with cancer. You know, you just, you fall apart and you pull it together and you start over again. And it, it's like the resiliency that's so um, central to the whole experience. And um, so I tried to embrace it and move forward. And, and then Fred said, you know, you should just really make this the same size that you make all your pieces, even though this was such a much bigger, more important event to me, um, because you understand the weight there, you understand how the clay dries and this, it, it's not time for an experiment. So I started again and wound up with this which is 17 and a half inches tall and it is the um you know the the final shape this is it when it went into the kiln after it was completely dry and baked it was baked at um 1935 degrees for about eight hours and then it turned it white which you see here and then I lifted it out and I started painting the glaze all over it. I started with each little holder for the, um, where the crystals would be because that's, that was the hardest to get into and the rest was just another few coats smoother. So you can see the, the top of it glazed and then the bottom of it I was working on. So, um, then this had to go back into the kiln for another four and a half hours. And what you saw is what came out at the beginning. So that's the whole journey. And um, I, I sent it off uh, yesterday or the day before. And while I was, and I'll bring you back to the beginning, so while I was um, doing all the paperwork that had to accompany the piece when I sent it, I needed to have a title for it. And I wanted to call it Holly, but somehow 
I, I wasn't sure. I thought that was not going to give the viewers enough of an experience by just by putting a name to it because they didn't know about your Holly's life involved with with this process that is a struggle. So I asked Fred, he does a lot of drawing and artwork and and I asked him what and he comes up with some good titles for his work and I'm I'm happy just leaving mine saying untitled or Mary or Joey or whatever, but he he contributed the title and um, I, I want you to say something about why you picked the name you did and, okay. and what right. it is. So the name, if I remember correctly, is Open Circuit. And uh, obviously the circuit idea is not only um, a function of your brain, but it's about connection, open and closed circuits, and clearly the connection that goes on within the family is important, open circuit. And the word open, of course, is the opposite of closed, and uh, we're all feeling open to, to life and uh, to creativity, so that's kind of how it came to me. Yeah. Holly, I, I don't know whether um, you know or whether Rod, Roger shared with you, but I had cancer twice in my lifetime. I was going to say the word so far. I can't believe that almost came out. But um, so my feelings in doing this were all mixed up with my own feelings. And I don't know. Um, I don't know where the separation is if there, I don't know that there needed to be one, but it wasn't as clean um, and an artistic project as I imagined initially, because I got all caught up in it. And so it became kind of a merging of both of our stories. So Roger's and mine. So, um, so that's it. That's, um, where we are. I don't really know what happens next in the process, but I guess we'll be hearing. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love it. Is it going to be like a reunion or something? Did, did you? I, I can't, can hardly hear, so I don't know. Yeah. Is it going to be a museum or something like that? Like an art gallery? Uh, a reveal? Yeah. 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 Ah, uh, yeah. So they are going to have. I, Elena told me she hasn't told the, everybody yet, but they are going to have a gallery showing of all the artwork. That's so, cool. and that'll be in Austin, where you are, and um, yeah, and everybody will be able to see it. Save so, the save the uh, material it's wrapped in, so that when you take it, it'll you'll be able to rewrap it nice and secure. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, yeah. So, um, yeah, so you will be able to see it. And I guess they're going to have both an online and a physical event. Cool. That's so amazing. I didn't know that we would get an opportunity to see it. And maybe yeah, it. yeah. I think it's beautiful. When you showed the back of it, it made me think of... Um, strength and protection. Oh, cool. That, that was the first um, thought that I had when I saw the back of it. Wow. Well, that's what it should, that's what it was meant to symbolize. So the message was definitely conveyed, at least for me. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm we'll glad the, that came through. Can we see the, um, the, the pictures you have of it again? Sure. Are the edges on the outside of the wings, um, is that like to look like fringe or fabric? It's supposed to be this edge that we're talking, it's twisted nerves. Oh, okay. It was, I, I um, you know how when you work with Play-Doh with kids, you have this squeezy thing and it, it pushes out like spaghetti. So 
I used that for the clay and I pushed out 18 or 20 really skinny little strings of clay and then I wound them up in each other to create the edge. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Oh. I, I don't know how to get rid of that. <laughs> Another life. So yeah. how, did, how did it get to be shiny? That was what the glaze produced all on its own. Oh. So yeah, it's very, it's very, it's like glass. It's really reflective. Well, glaze is made of glass, and it, and that's why it has to be burnt at such a high temperature because it melts. And then, and this had some other chemistry to it that was, in addition to the glassy surface, also reflective. So in some places it looks gold, and some places. It, you can almost see your face in it. It's like a mirror. And um, I'll send you all the pictures so that you know you have that, or you'll have this recording, I guess, too. That's amazing. It's it's great. I love it. Cool. <laughs> of course, I love the story. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, we are living in it. Yeah. So, uh, it's interesting to me because um I keep saying this so looks like I'm looking at you. Yeah. Um it's interesting because when you I don't even remember how I got involved with this. Can you hear me okay? You're muffled, but we're getting through. Go ahead. Your voice is easier because it's more bass. <laughs> <clears throat> so when you were I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's what's interesting to me is that I never thought of um, a sculpture being, because I only saw all the pieces that they showed were all um, painting. Yeah. And I didn't even, never even occurred to me that you could make a sculpture as part of this project, and I'm blown away. Okay. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what we're hoping. <laughs> I don't, I can't do anything else, uh -huh. you know, so when they asked me, I said, you know, I'm not a painter, I have to do a sculpture, and she said, we know that, so it was, they, it was Elena, I think, who actually saw my work at a show in Houston, Houston, yeah, and so this was seven or eight years ago, and then she contacted me and said, I saw you in some show, and I think maybe you could do something for this, so say sure well i'm glad she did i'm really i'm, I'm blown away it's oh thank you really, really amazing and i think that's a good representation of how this lady here <laughs> and my daughter who's yeah. right here <laughs> i've carried us all of us through this not just me yeah yeah i know like i think back about my experiences and what I remember are the the people who helped me through it. That's, you know, you don't remember the pain of it all, all the surgeries, all of, you know, the time in the hospital, the time, you, you remember it, but the, what's meaningful are the nurses, the, you know, how horrible some of them were and so, and how incredible some of them yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. And, right. you know, and that's what you take away from the whole thing is the goodness that people have and and especially your spouse and your kids and and what it all what it all comes down to in the end yeah well thank you this is incredible yes thank you so much well thank you and and i'm sure we'll be in touch again as this keeps going and and maybe we'll see each other on Zoom again, <laughs> and I won't have to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I wish you, we both wish you just good health forever, <laughs> getting through all this together. Wow. So where are you again? I, I, I we're, in, we're in New Jersey, right outside of Philadelphia. Right. We okay. talked about that briefly during our one yeah. conversation. Yeah. So. so yeah, I wish I could be there down in Texas to see the whole thing, but 
um, you know, I have a friend who doesn't live too far and we look alike, so maybe <laughs> she'll, <laughs> she'll go for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're doing like some kind of virtual reality awesome. gallery. Oh. I have, like, I don't know. I'm really kind of still unsure of exactly what they're talking about. So I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I didn't, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what they're thinking of doing and how this whole Zoom and gallery thing is going to work, but they, um, they asked me to send them pictures of the piece and divide the piece up into nine sections and take close-ups of each one of the sections. And then, so I, they've got something planned, but I, I have no idea. Huh. So right. we'll That's find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope I get to see them in person. Yeah, yeah, awesome. that would be great. That will be so great. Well, you'll have to you'll have to zoom me in and then walk me through the exhibit then. <laughs> if I can, I don't know how they're going to do this. So yeah, so we'll find out. Yeah, FaceTime. <laughs> it's supposed to be virtual, so I have no idea what that's going to even be. Yeah, I don't know. We'll just do what they say. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yes, thank thank you. you, and have a wonderful rest of the weekend, and I'm sure we'll be seeing each other again soon. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, well, Nice thanks. to speak with you. Okay, bye. bye.